Yo. Wanna see Yo. a wanna see a cool trick? Sure. How's uh how's Richfield, Utah? <laughs> nice dude. You got my IP. I don't care. Hello there. Hello. Do you wanna play a game? Sure. I can guess where you live. Richfield. Dude, what the f Jesus. You're tired of 12 year olds getting your location? Or better yet, any company getting your location and sometimes preventing you from watching shows or going on websites. Well, thanks to the sponsor of this video, NordVPN, you could avoid that. With Nord, you get access to super fast servers with double data encryption that makes your browsing anonymous. This will allow you to watch YouTube videos that may be blocked in your country, or even Netflix and other websites that don't air certain shows in your country. Not only that, but there's no data logging even when using public connections. Just go to nordvpn.com frost for more info and use code frost for a two year plan plus one month with a huge discount. Now before we start. I have worked on this video unlike any other video. I really do hope you guys enjoy, and if you do, please consider subscribing. Let's see how fast we can get to 700k this year. I would say early morning is the quietest and the safest time of the day to move weight, especially when you're trying to get all the way across the map. I'm talking early, early morning. No cracks of gunfire, Large furnaces are off, no mini copters in the sky. You need it to be quiet. And if you do it at the right time, it'll be the easiest ride home of your life. Unless the weight that you're moving isn't yours. So yeah. We fucked up, and when you fuck up as hard as we did, sometimes you just gotta bite the bullet. That is Kai. And we took his shit. So, that's me right there. Definitely not the main character of this story, but I do play a key role into how this all unfolds. So pay attention, because I know I sure as hell did it when this all went down. Now, keep in mind, I wasn't committed to this server which means I didn't really want to farm up a base. I just wanted to test the waters really quick and see whether or not it was a place I'd like to stay. So I'd make a quick compound bow at the nearest workbench I could find and try to go see if there was any early morning roamers to pick off. That's the thing about joining servers early in the morning. You always get that easy, fresh start while everyone's asleep and everyone thinks they could farm or finish up their offline raids before the mass majority gets on. 2C4 raid on the coast? Oh, that's an oil that's an oil base probably getting hit. And it seemed I was right. An offline raid was on the menu for today. You can't pass up such a tempting opportunity. I put my loot in some nearby stashes, and I went to go take a look. Maybe just poke a little bit of fun at him with my compound bow and stir things up a little. Oh shit. Bro, this is perfect.
no, no, no. Now I'm going to do you solid and tell you the connection that I failed to understand when this was all going down originally. That right there is Kai and his buddy counter raiding, and this was my first encounter with them. Oh shit, dude. Do I just wait? Uh, imagine fucking offline. How do you fucking offline if you're online? We were offline, but one of us logged on as you guys were C4ing my it, door. It doesn't even matter though. We're, we're the guy who's going to be able to raid you. Get the fuck out of here, fucking slow. Hey yo, Bo Kid. If you watch the uh, backside of his base, the garage door, and kill him when he comes outside, I can give you this base when we're done with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I got you, bro. Thank you, man. I'll, I'll watch. Sorry for shooting at you. I was just trying to make a play as a naked. <laughs> oh. Just happened. Respawn. Uh, boat kid outside. The door is 3321. The door is 3321. If you come in here and watch the door, don't come in there. There's a shotgun trap. If you watch the door, and if I said. He just died. <gasps> what? So, while that empties, let me do my best to explain what I think just happened. A raid was in progress and the raiders killed the base owners and Kai and his buddy counter raid. They had a big shootout, but ultimately Kai was the only one left. The guy with the DD was the base owner and he spawned back and talked shit. Kai's dumbass placed a shotgun trap that blocked him in because he didn't have TC. Dumbass. The base owner opens the door, kills Kai, dies through a shotgun trap, and Kai, not wanting to let the base owner get his shit back, tells the naked outside what code he used. And now I'm left with all of the shit. Oh, no fucking way. What just happened? Now let's not get too excited because something oh this good God. doesn't happen without some repercussions. I was now sitting on what a gold mine fuck? fought over between three different groups. The what base owners, see? the raiders, and the counter raiders. The only question was who was going to come back first. I need to break that. As the night grew closer, so did my inevitable doom. Now, the best thing I could have done in this situation was get the fuck out of there with the good loot, or at least stash the explosives, but I guess I was just too sidetracked and taken off guard by everything that was happening so quickly. It started with the base owner coming back to see if he could possibly get back into his base. Oh shit. Oh, I blocked that. He's trying to get back in. <laughs> Unlucky, dude. I can make more than that.
fuck, dude. Fuck. Fuck, dude. There's too much good shit in here. My god, dude. Oh, I should have just used just AG. Fucking turret. Well, that was rough, but that's Rust. And that was a very good introduction to a few of the main characters in this story. So now let's skip forward three days. By this time I had switched many servers, played solo, played with friends, and I wasn't getting any more lucky than I did that day. The Christmas update just hit, which didn't wipe any servers, but it brought in a whole new wave of winter fun, and everyone was flooding in trying to enjoy the update. I was one of them, and I didn't even know at the time that I had joined the same server three days later. So without further ado, I gathered all the Christmas presents around the map and then boxed them for a shitload of Eokas that I used on everybody I could find. There were so many people on this map, and there was so much shit going on with so many big bases that it seemed really promising. Granted, my luck wasn't always there, I was able to eventually get a base set up. That dude is dooming. Alright, now enough of that boring shit, let's get back to business. So you know that compound? You know, the big fucking one, you couldn't miss it. It was massive, so fat and juicy, I just couldn't take my eyes off it. So, I had to go investigate. Word on the street was this compound was impossible to infiltrate, but I thought I'd give it a shot. I'm, I'm just kidding, no one said that. I just got fly hacked. And just like that, I was in. Like Tom Cruise in Mission Fucking Impossible. There was no compound that was gonna keep me out of their base. Except this one. This one actually kept me out because there was no way I could get in their second wall. So I decided to wait in the inner compound walls and hope that maybe I would see them. And I did.
They had just left, and this would be my only chance to hope that they don't die and come back in the same entrance. I waited there for a long time, and this, this is when things started to get very, very interesting. What the fuck? Bro, SEAL Team 6 is coming in. <laughs> How many is that? Chill, chill, chill. I'm just, I'm with you, man. I'm just trying to get these kids, please. Please pick me up, dude. I'm just camping these kids. I'm trying to make a play, dude. No, no, no. I'm just trying to make a play. Please pick okay. me back up. Okay. I, I'm, I'm picking you up. We're, we're, okay, we're okay. leaving. But if you kill one of these guys, bring a skull to us. You know, 11? Okay? And we'll trade you something for it, okay? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Die, 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 die. Oh, he took my flashlight, son of a bitch. Do I have a torch? No. Where did my shells go? Wait, I have my shells. He dropped my yokas. Dude, I got robbed inside a compound that wasn't even fucking theirs. That was that thing. What happened to my yokas, dude? What the fuck? I can't find them. <laughs> no fucking way. Now, what did that man say exactly? We're leaving, but if you kill one of these guys, bring a school to us. You know, 11? Okay, and we'll trade you something for it, okay? Oh, here they are. What the fuck? Bring us his skulls in 011 and we'll trade you something for it. I mean, I've never been a hired hitman in Rust before, but it shouldn't be too hard, right? Kill him, bring a skull, they'll trade me shit. I don't even need to get loot. This would be light work. I don't even need to do anything, like bring a gear set. Just their skulls. One skull for us, that's all we need. This was turning out to be a little more difficult than I expected. Fuck, dude.
I just got fly kicked! Okay, that's it. I was done. There would be no more fucking around. I had lost too many easy opportunities. It was time to make an investment. You can't go wrong with a double barrel shotgun. What do you know? It worked. I also got lucky with there only being one out at a time, but either way, I got a hatchet and I made some small stashes, gathered the skulls, and headed back to base. Upon my arrival to O11, I quickly realized why this group wanted these skulls. And don't think that I went down there with the only two gear sets that I just got. I had to play this safe. Also, pardon my high-pitched squeaker voice, I try to make sure that no one recognizes who I am. Hello? Hello, Santa brings gifts, ho ho ho. Now let's finally make some connections to some characters in this story. Hello. Hi. Yo, chill, man. And now what you doing? I have gifts. I have schools. Can you please stop shooting? Okay, so let's introduce the first clan member. I never actually got his name, so we're just going to call him Useless. Now, he goes under the smaller yet still massively large fucking compound list. You said, I wasn't talking to you, but I was talking to someone else, and they said they would give me shit for him. Please just ask your group right, or something. Alright, man. Back up, back up. I never back did up. catch the name I of the guy who offered me the trade, but I could recognize his voice if I heard it. Hello. Hello? Oh, hey, were you the one I talked to? And that was him. We're leaving, but if you kill one of these guys, bring your school to us. No eleven? Okay? And we'll trade you something, okay? His name was Max, also under the same list. What's up, man? I talked to you in that you compound. Broke. Is this that dry? Massive, massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never got your name. What's your name? We're, we're talking about like a... Now, these guys yeah, were superstitious. They didn't want to come even right? one foot out of their yeah, compound. Yeah, yeah. But you know who did come from outside of their compound? Hello. Kai. Now, we both never paid attention to who we were during that short encounter three days ago, so we had no clue our relation. Obviously, the same list. Swamp Boys, on the other hand, we had Thick Tim, Two Dads, and Gluck Gluck. We also had a few unknowns on both teams, but that could have been Kai or anybody else. So, there you go. The main characters, so far. I mean, obviously these groups were bigger, and there were some more important characters that play some roles that you've already met. So anyway, back to our trade at hand. They ended up going through with it, and they gave me some weapons. But that wasn't all. They also had an interesting proposition for me. Appreciate it, dude. Yeah, it um, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have a nice day. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hey. Now that voice, I recognized. Hey, yo, Bo Kid. If you watch the uh, backside of his base, the garage door, and then kill him when he comes outside, I can give you this base when we're done with it. Yes. How, how'd you like doing that little little side mission, man? Back over here. Back over here. Listen. I can I can get you on on a main mission. You feel? You feel? It, it's boring as shit, okay? But listen, the amount of shit we can give you, I mean, come here. Like the amount of shit we can give you. To, you to, 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 to. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. Take that. Take it. Okay. If you're down, we we can. We need I'm somebody down. to do it. I'm Nobody down. will fucking do it. I'm down. So, I mean, I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> are you sure? Yes, yes, yes. Um. Okay, if you meet me on the east side of the compound, I, I'll, I I'll tell you what to do. Can I put this on my base first so I know I don't lose it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're fine. Man. 
a boring yet super rewarding task, a job that they wanted me to do. I mean, was was this fucking Christmas? I mean, yeah, yeah, it was. This was an opportunity I could not pass up. That Damn fucking right, I was gonna take them up on that offer. I've ever had. I deepened my stuff and I headed straight back to the east side entrance as requested. Now, there is a lot of dialogue that takes place in this next sequence, but Kai does a pretty good job at explaining it on a ride over. My initial impressions? Kai was kind of a role player. I mean, at least he had a nice garage. Hi. I like your base, dude. I, I, I emptied the shotgun trap. Oh, shit. I didn't, yeah, that would have killed me. We met in Kai's garage for some quick small uh, talk, the but car, then he urged that I get in the vehicle and he uh, talk about the rest of the situation know, on the ride right over. I don't, I don't want you pulling no shit on me, so. I mean, he was a smart player too. Shotgun traps, peacekeeper auto turrets, and he kept the taxi cab locked and me in the back at all times. This is when I'd finally get the rundown and I'd understand a little bit more about my new job. Yeah, and uh, turn your sound down so you can actually hear me talk too. That's a good idea. Okay. Let's start with the compound on your right. When we're pulling out of here like this, don't ever take a right. That takes you straight to TFR's compound. They will roof camp the fucking shit out of you. The man said TFR's compound. I'm assuming that was the Swamp Boys. The driver doesn't leave vehicle. You can. It doesn't really matter, but just don't have our shit on you. What it seemed to me was I was going to be the gunner for some sort of transport. Once we're up here at Bandit, you can take a left and go around. There's probably going to be trees and shit in the way. You'll just have to farm those. After that, you turn down the dirt road, and this takes you to the main road. This is like the hot spot of the map. Literally fucking compound boat kids anyway, everywhere. I have a to, what? Who's TFR? Is that the group that TFR is the compound, the compound you jumped into. Yeah, okay. We don't really know what it stands for, but we just call them total fucking retards. So, yeah. After this curve, you're kind of safe. This is just a long part, but also the easiest part. Not many bases up north here. Uh, the real only reason we're up this far north is because of oil rig. This was a long fucking drive, and I still didn't really have an idea on what I was doing. Okay, so you're about to see the best hemp farm in the entire server, by the way, so yeah. You're gonna be taking the hemp from this base back to our base using the route I just showed you. It was beautiful. The perfect hemp base. Uh, that's Crothers in there, actually. You can see him through the shop front. He's literally just a farm bot. That's all he does. He puts the hemp at the bottom, and Chris comes and picks it up. You probably won't talk to him ever, but... Who's Chris? Chris is your driver. He lives right here. He's probably the nicest guy you'll ever fucking meet, so... And he's solo, so, you know, be nice. Yo, 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 yo. Chris, you there? I don't think he's here, man. Nah, I, I think he's here. <laughs> the camera's off. Oh, yeah, he's here. <laughs> The fuck, dude? I was kind of scared. I, I got you a gift, my guy. Hello. I'm I'm you your gift. Your, your personal assistant, man. Sub boys. It's your gift. You said you needed help on uh, your runs because you kept fucking up. So, Chris, me dry eye, dry eye, me Chris. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. Wait. wait. Talk again? Uh, hello? Oh, fuck, dude. No, 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 like, say something, like, full sentence. Uh, hi, how's it going, man? Uh, my name's Dry Eye. Like, is, is it a joke or something? Like, you send me a what? fucking kid with the voice changer. <laughs> I have to, like, okay, okay, listen, man, listen. He's the only one that offered to help, so, you know. <laughs> oh my god, dude, I thought he recognized me. So, you guys have fun. 
<laughs> I will. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta blast. Okay, boys. Uh, uh, hi. So, uh, what are we doing? Okay, so after that interesting meetup, we got straight to work. Every run started with a phone call to Chris. Sometimes he wouldn't even pick it up because we just knew it was our cue to get moving. He invited me into his team and brought me into his garage where he showed me his transport vehicle and all of his high qual parts. So, this is the car. Check inside. We have some good crazy pieces. For how unexcited this man sounded, you knew he was proud of those high qual parts. The first stop was right next door. He always went around the side to get the weight, which I thought was interesting, but I guess they must have had a designated room for him to loot. He got in and then it was straight to the run, back to Kai's compound. When we got there, there was always one or two guys waiting to let us in. Chris made it clear to not get out of the vehicle or else I'd be killed by the traps in the garage, and the two guys would empty the truck and put some guns or supplies for us as rewards in the back. And then we'd be back on our way home. These runs were non-stop, at least two runs an hour. The server was quiet that night and I was told I could log off, but he would definitely be down to do some runs tomorrow, and that's exactly what we did. Over the next few days, actually, Chris and I worked non-stop, and he also allowed me access to his front airlock and the garage, so it would be easier for us. We then took some time to make an investment and pick up a new vehicle oh, that could now hold four parts. This new modification made it much more fun for us because it made it easier to shoot at nakeds on our drives over. Granted, it was hard as shit to hit anything, it still made it more fun and also increased our field of view for callouts. Not only that, it was so much fun that Chris even wanted to try, so I took on driving for a few of the runs. And on our second day, we had our first run-in with TFR. What the fuck happened, bro? I don't know, man. What the fuck? I was even able to snake a full metal kit for my base. I convinced Chris to let me drive there really quick before we headed back to his base so I could depot some stuff, which would be the full metal set. Just come inside for now. Thanks, man. What the fuck, dude? <gasps> what? What? Chris is stealing? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that Chris may have actually been stealing their cloth. I mean, we just dropped off the whole load at their base after that fight. So why would he still have a whole row on it? 
When I arrived, Chris wasn't there at the time. It seemed like he was farming or something in the desert, so I waited for him in his base. This was going to be an interesting talk, because I liked Kai, and I liked him, and I didn't want to make it seem like I was going to snitch, so I had to break the ice with him. Oh, what's up, dude? Did they call? Yo. Hello? Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> Did they call? No, no one called. Hello? Oh, oh shit. You turned off your voice engine. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I, it's cuz, man. Alright, <clears throat> this is serious Finally. talk. We need to have a talk. No, listen. We need to have a talk, Chris, okay? Here's your shit back. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Here. What is this? Chris? What is this, Chris? Shit. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, you have some explaining to do, okay, buddy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Come on, confess. What's okay, going okay, on, man? Listen, you know that saying? Sometimes looking for answers only here to. No, 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 no. You are not gonna fucking. What the? Chris actually did not want to tell me what was up. So, I guess I was gonna go have to snitch to Kai. No, obviously not. But, things started to escalate very quickly after this. What you're about to see is only about two hours after Chris and I just had that conversation. Chris had just got a call from Kai to start up another run. Just like any other run, we got in the vehicle and we headed straight over. But we were still in TFR's vehicle from the fight initially, so we didn't have the bed on the back of our truck, which meant our field of view was limited. What the fuck is that light? What the fuck? Hello? We're fine. toppling down and the only thing that pissed me off was I honestly had nothing to do with it. Oh my god, dude. Do I try to talk to him? I don't know what to do, man. I feel like I shouldn't go over the gun. <sighs> yep. I was fucked. Oh, fuck me, dude. Oh my god, they're right fucking there. They know where they <laughs> they know where I've lived the whole time, bro. Oh my god, I'm so fucked. Wait, they go through my. Oh no. I'm fucked. You first thing, Chris. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm just a solo player. 
I saw you guys coming up the hill, so I'm hiding in my base. I don't Dry want to We've seen you come up here so many fucking times. <laughs> you ran in this base. What are you talking about? We know it's you. Fuck, dude. What do I do? Oh, my God. Come to the shop front or you're getting ready. Chris and I may have become friends, but I wasn't about to take the fall for him. Okay, listen, 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 listen for one sec. No fake voice. This is serious, okay? I did not take any of your shit, I swear, dude. I'm not even kidding. I found out at the same exact fucking time, okay? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Listen, I befriended Chris, so I have his base codes, and I could get you what you want back so you don't have to raid us, okay? Because he's just a fucking role player, and I promise you, I literally have like 130 cloth in my fucking base. It would be completely pointless. This gear set I got from the fight against TFR. After that, they left, and they didn't say anything. So, I mean... I guess I assumed that the plan that I just offered was a green light? Now, what I had to do after this was something I was not proud of. But it would possibly save Chris and my base. There's over 7 billion boys and girls I've only met a few One is lucky just to find someone true And I found you When I arrived to Chris's base, I had seen that he had already started prepping for the worst. Yo! <laughs> nice wall, dude. Apparently we were closer than I thought, because he let me all the way into his base, into his TC room, into his loot, um, into everything. When Chris made a run to the gas station that night, I took what wasn't his. I got in the car, and I drove off. I didn't say anything to him. I took the cloth, I took the sulfur, and I went to go return it to Kai. Is here? Is there more in the okay. This is all he had, so we good? Um you wanna come with us here in a minute? Yeah, where? I knew exactly where this was going. Uh, uh we're gonna go hit Chris. Uh hello? I'm sorry. Did I not just bring you the cloth? <laughs> I knew he was gonna fucking pull this <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, you did. That was, uh, you know, we won't raid you, but we're still gonna hit him. But that's what we agreed upon. I bring you the cloth and you don't raid us. Both of us, I thought. I was literally just in his base. He doesn't uh, have shit. Nah, that was just. That was just for you. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter, man, but like. It is the fact that he stole from us, you know what I mean? We don't give two shits about the cloth. It's like the purpose that he, that he had them intentions, so. so you're going to raid him right now? Or not. Yeah, hey, here in a minute. Here, join the team. At this point, I wasn't starting to like Kai, but at the same time, this was their business. I was just gonna tag along for the ride. I left Chris that one last message so he could do what he could to prepare before what was about to come, but there wasn't gonna be much I could do. There was five of these guys, and they were far more geared than both of us. 
I half expected this though. I mean, Kai was a good clan leader and he wasn't going to let Chris run amok behind his back. I don't have code. Pity on it. No code, dude. <laughs> they thought they had me, dude. Hey, everyone get off in this turret. Bro, this is so fucked. They weren't wasting any time. Guy had a pretty strong bunker base, but. They were gonna slice through it like butter. Happy. I'm happy like a peach in a tree. There I am hanging around hoping there'd be someone like you to pick me. I'm happy. Hey, up to Chris. Oh, happy, Lord. Chris. I'm happy like the tree. In Hey, come to the shop room, man. Chris, come to the fucking shop room, man. Lift the scene, Chris. Come to the fucking shop room. You're gonna get fucking raided. All right, man. You're lost. At least they take the blues away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy. Kind of a fucking pussy, happy. Chris. I'm happy like a peach in a tree. There I am. Are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. here. Yeah, go, 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 go. I'm happy, oh happy low. I'm happy like the tree in the middle. Are you guys alive? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. They're sure. dead. They're yo, 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 they're dead. They're dead. Come loot. You know, Chris is bullshit. Some things are better left unanswered. You know that saying? Sometimes looking for answers only had to move. No, questions. no, no, no. You are not gonna fucking. What the? That's bullshit, bro. I talk in my normal voice to break the ice to you. Now you tell me what the fuck is going on, dude. We're friends. We've been through too much, dude. You gotta tell me, man. I'm obviously not gonna snitch. No, Chris didn't just tell me the feud he had with Kai, he gave me the whole story. White Day. That right there is Kai's base, alive and well. With the swamp providing a perfect water source by outpost, he was about to build the foundation for the best cloth base on the server. Until later that night, TFR and the boys showed up and took everything from him. Kai and his group lost their perfect start that night and swore for revenge against TFR. But TFR had numbers and their base had grew too big during the days to come. So instead, Kai and his group decided to dominate the PvP scene and collect TFR's skulls as revenge. Kai still dreamed of a large hemp base, and to do that, they needed a place with a lot of water. The next best spot? In front of Oil Rig, where Chris was already living. Kai raided Chris and all the others in that area that night, and offered them all an ultimatum. He wouldn't grief their base if they wanted to work for him. 
To Kai, it was nothing personal, but to Chris, it was. So what the fuck happened after that conversation? Well, you saw. After Kai spared my base and I went to Chris to steal his cloth back, I told him everything. I told him we needed to prep, because he was going to get raided. We hooked up a door switch to the front door that Chris would be able to flick on and off. We made sure to turn the turret on full hostile mode, and we put his best weapon in it. Now here comes the best part, and Kai's biggest mistake. You may have noticed when I got out of the scrap heli, I already had building privilege. Now, how? TC was in the hemp base, and Chris only had access to the side loot room, so how did we get the codes? Well, when we fought TFR, I finally recognized Kai's voice. It only took me two days. Respawn. Uh, both get outside. The door's 3321. The door's 3321. Now, what were the chances that the code that Kai used to spam into that counter raid and told that unsuspecting naked who he thought he'd never meet again was the same code that he used for his main base? I went back in my recordings to get the code and I tried them on the base later that night. And they worked. Now, I couldn't do much because they had turrets everywhere and I couldn't change the gate codes because that would just be a dead giveaway and was pointless. But you know what place didn't have turrets? Their hemp base. So, later that night, Chris and I snuck over there and we entered in all the codes. We destroyed all their bags and replaced them with not only bags for him and I, but for Kira and Sergeant Major Deal as well. When I knew the raid was finally going down, I called them both on Discord, and they were ready to go. All they had to do was wait for the green light. Chris, hello? Yo, loot, loot, loot. It worked. It fucking worked, dude. It fucking worked. <laughs> now we had a row of rockets and a shit ton of loot. It wasn't enough to raid Kai's compound, but we had an idea. We took the scrap heli and the rockets and we flew to Outpost, right by TFR's compound. We knocked on their door and we made them a very simple deal. We'll give you a row of rockets, if you make sure to use it on Kai's base. They agreed, but they seemed hesitant, and we wondered if they'd even use the rockets on their base. They said it would take time for them to prep for the raid, and it was already so late that I decided I'd go to bed. When I got on the next day, Chris was working happily in his base, his new hemp base. I had to make a run to Kai's base first to see if TFR had followed through with the plan, and their base was completely obliterated. It was pummeled by rockets. This was a huge victory for not me, but Chris. He was a solo player at heart, and he would have taken on Kai with or without me. So on that final note, I got in my car, and I drove off. But this time, it was for good. I'm happy like a peach in a tree There I am hanging around hoping There'd be someone like you to pick me I'm happy, oh happy Lord I'm happy like the tree in the breeze There I am away to you Hoping that you'd sit by me Till my heart start to race in. I can feel now how I've got so much to live for. I've had my share of days, they turn to gray. At least they take the blues away. I'm happy like a peach in a tree There I am a-hanging 